I'm Samuel Smith. I'm the pastor of the Mount Horeb Missionary Baptist Church. It is presently located at 118 West Gray. When I came out here in 1964, it was located at 1205 Victor Street. And I came out here to preserve and, and uh, cause history to be what it should be. The Lord sent me out here, 1964, and said to me, go and preserve the area that I'm sending you to. I didn't know where he was sending me. And, uh, but when I had this dream, and this dream was a tall tower that I had to climb up. When I start climbing up that tower, I caught hold to the first round to climb up that tower, and all of the rounds on that tower fell out. And so I said to the Lord, how am I going to go up on the tower that you told me to climb? He said, use your strength. I used my strength, pull up on the rails where the rounds had been got to the platform of that tower. Then he said, look, and I looked toward the Fourth Ward area, Friedman Town area. He said, all of that land needs to be preserved because all of that land is history. I didn't know what he was really talking about, but I knew that I had to obey what he was saying the Lord. And, but the thing that bothered me was I had climbed that tower and no way to get down. And I said, now how am I going to get down? He said, fly. I flew from the platform of that tower, landed in the Freeman Town, Fort Worth area. And he said, look around. And I looked he said, all of this need to be preserved, not just the houses and the people, but I took a real sharp look at the streets themselves. And the streets, most of the streets were brick. It was amazing. And I looked at it and I said, Lord, what is this? He said, that's black history. And I want it preserved. I want this area preserved. And it, when I moved into obeying the Lord, I did not know at that time that I was going to be a pastor out in this area because I was pastoring in the northeast part of town. But shortly after awakening from that dream, I was called to the Mount Horror Missionary Baptist Church, which was 1205 Victor. When I came out here, I immediately proceeded to assemble all of the pastors that were pastoring out in this area. This area at that time had 19 churches, functioning, operating churches, and I assembled the pastors and said to them, I've been sent here to preserve history. And they laughed at me because I was the youngest among all of the pastors and said, you're a newcomer. We don't need nobody to tell us what to do. It wasn't me because when I looked at this area, it was God that had brought this area into being. God, who caused this area, which was a swamp land, to be developed by free slaves. God, who brought this area into a livable place. And so I was addressing history. I was obeying Almighty God. And when I reflect back, and looked at how far God had brought black folk to
to be a functioning people. I didn't know the history of this area, but I learned later on that the brick streets were put down by freed slaves, by the, the offsprings of freed slaves. It was put down by them. And the reason why the brick streets were put down was because the city did not want to develop this land and make it livable that blacks could be functional people in the Houston area. But God moved and caused the blacks to rise up and do, in essence, like Moses and Israel did in Egypt. They developed the area where they were to a beautiful place. And I felt like that this area could be a young Egypt, a developed land. And I felt like God was moving them in that way. And I, I began immediately to sense what history was all about here. And I wanted to really and truly move in a way that would cause history to remain. But people had a different idea. They didn't have the idea about this area when it was land. But they had a different idea once that blacks developed it. And the thing that really caused my heart to rejoice is, is that we are, and I, when I said we, black folk are kings and queens in this world. And we have the ability to be what God wants us to be in a developing way, in a creative way, in every way, because God is in the hearts of men and especially in the hearts of blacks. I am not ruling out others, but I know that he's in the hearts of, of, of we people that are of color. And so because of that, because of the development of the brick streets because of the development of the land where which is which is known as Friedman Town, when it was developed and became a little city within the big city, then they saw what this land was all about and they proceeded to remove it from those that originally developed it. But I want to say uh, that God is in the business. And if we obey God, if we move in the way that God would have us to move, things, everything will turn around because God gave this land to the ones who developed it. And God intended for it to be what he wanted it to be. And that's, that's, that, that's my, my every effort to want to see things being like God wants them to be. When he told me to preserve it, to save it, I've been striving to do just that because I had the opportunity to leave this area. I had the opportunity to leave this area. They wanted me to leave it. They, they offered me $3 million for my property only after they burned my church down. I was here when churches were burned. I was here when they tried, they tried to move us out first. They tried to cause us to, in a frightful way, to flee. Because in the 70s, they went around to all of the churches and gave brochures to pastors. I received brochures. Gave brochures to the pastors and said to them, in a few years, this area will be developed into a residential area, and there's no plans for any churches to be in this area. So while you have an opportunity, you ought to flee and go to where you can find, where you can continue your worship and what have you. But I said to them, I'm not going anywhere. God sent me out here, and I'm going to stay here. 
and, and, and others, some others, they fled from here. But we stayed, and then they start burning the churches down. My church, Bethel, and other churches, they start burning them down. When they burned my church down, as I said, they offered me $3 million to buy the property where my church once sat. Ten acres of free land anywhere but out in the full Ward area. $250,000 to go on my personal bank account. And to sweeten the whole pot, brought a brand new black Canese Rolls Royce and said, it's yours, all you have to do is sign the bottom line. But I said to them, I'm not going anywhere. I want to see Freedmantown preserved and developed into the way that God wanted to be developed. They said, you're not building. And they were right. I wasn't building according to my plan because I couldn't borrow any money. All of the banks, all of the financial areas were closed on me. And I couldn't borrow any money. And so I got a call from one of my friends in Phoenix, Arizona, say, you can't borrow money in Houston, come to Phoenix. My banker will loan you money. And I went there to borrow the money. He laughed at me and said, why is it? that you can't borrow any money from Houston. I laughed back at him and said, you know why? They don't want us to build in that area. They want to take it. He said, I can't loan you any money. I caught the plane and came back to Houston on my way back crying, crying because I knew that God had told me to build. But then he said to me, what are you crying about? I didn't tell you to borrow money. I told you to build. So I said, now, Lord, if you want me to build, how? And he gave me the plan. We built the church that was going to cost us $1.5 million. We built it for $800,000 cash. Money came from God. God said, preserve the land. That's what we're trying to do, preserve this area. We tried to get those that were here to stand with us. They fled. And I thank God today that we have others that have r rose up and they see the vision, they see the plan, and they're saying, we're going to preserve the land. We're going to keep the history that God intended for it to be for the black folk. And I want to say that God is in the plan, and God will see the plan become a reality.